Hello folks and welcome. In this video, we're going to learn how to create our first voice broadcast campaign. This video assumes that you in fact have already learned how to create your account and that you are in fact ready to create your first voice broadcast campaign. So what we'll do is we'll find the outbound campaign section, click on the words voice broadcast. And the first thing that we need to do is record the sound files or the messages that we want Callfire to play for our recipients. In this video, we're going to assume that I am an insurance agent and I'm going to be sending these messages out to my policyholders to remind them that they need to make a payment on their policy. One quick note about the voice broadcast product uh, regarding some legal rules and restrictions. Anytime that a business plans on sending a pre-recorded message to a consumer, that business must have some semblance or form of opt-in consent prior to the broadcast of that message from their consumer. There are some exceptions if you're a business sending calls to another business, you don't need that consent. Or if you're a political group or a religious group or a not-for-profit, or if you're sending out emergency messages, then you're clear as well. The first thing I'm going to do is enable the transfer option. That way I can uh, allow my policyholders to be transferred over back to my office to make that payment. I'll record my live message first. I'll press select a message. Now when I record my live message, I'm going to want to tell folks to press 1 to be transferred or press 8 to opt out. Callify won't do that for you, so I have to remind my folks they can actually do those things. So I'll press select a message. I'll press create a new message. And there are three ways to play here. I can upload an MP3 or a WAV file. If I choose to upload an audio file, I need to make sure that it's recorded in the following format, and that format is 16-bit, 8 kilohertz mono, again, 16-bit, 8 kilohertz mono, and that file can be no bigger than 3.5 megabytes. I can also record my message over the phone. Here at CallFire, we use the Hollywood principle. In other words, don't call us, we'll call you. If you click on that option, you'll see a box, you'll type in your phone number in that box, and CallFire will call you. Follow the prompts, and your message will then be recorded over the phone. Or you can use text-to-speech, where you type out some text and Callfire will read it off using one of uh, four voices. The text-to-speech engines that we have, they all more or less sound like sexier versions of Stephen Hawking. No offense to the great man that he is. So I'll select that option. Go grab some text real quick. Okay, there we go. I'll go ahead and append it by pressing accept. And I'll send a test call later on just so we can hear what the message sounds like. The next thing that we need to do is record the transfer message. This is the message that Callfire plays should somebody press the 1 button requesting to be transferred. This message would sound something like, hey, thanks for pressing 1. You've now, you'll be transferred to us shortly. I'll press select a message. I think I already have one over here, so there we go. Next thing to do is specify the transfer number. This is the phone number that Callfire will use to transfer the calls to. I'll just use this number over here. Assuming this is number to my agency. Max transfers refers to the total number of transferred calls Callfire will accept before pausing the campaign. Let's say that I only have two folks in my office who can take those incoming calls. If I set max transfers to two, Callfire will pause the campaign and only resume the broadcast once one of those lines is free. Next thing I'll need to do is record my answering machine message. This is the message that Callfire would play should that call go to an answering machine. When recording your answering machine messages, the message I should say, there's no need to tell folks to press 1 to be transferred or press 8 to opt out. Why do you ask? Well, that's because Callfire, or not rather Callfire, but when the recipient of your calls is listening to that message on their answering machine, there's no longer an active phone line in the background. So if they try to press 1 or try to press 8, nothing will happen. So when you're recording that message, you can simply tell them, hey, please call us back at said number, and then we'll go ahead and take care of this for you. Okay, we'll use that one right there. Now for the do not call message, just like it's cousin the transfer message, this is simply an acknowledgement message where you can tell someone, hey, thanks for pressing you know, eight, you've now been added to my do not call list. So I'll press select a message. I think I have one over here. Excellent, DNC do not call. Now I'll go ahead and send a test call right now so we can hear what these messages sound like. Go and send it to that number over there. Hello? This is the Valentine Agency with a reminder that you are delinquent on making a payment on your policy. Press 1 to take care of this immediately or press 8 to opt out. I'll press 1. Thanks for pressing 1. You will be transferred to a rep shortly. Thank you for calling Callfire's messaging service. Excellent. Okay, that worked. I like the way those messages sounded, so I'll go press close, and I'll press the green next button. Okay, the next thing you need to do is to tell Callfire who I will be sending these messages to. Real easy. Uh, there are five ways to play here. I can either upload a spreadsheet. I can choose a list already added to Callfire using the Contacts button over here, and the assumption is that you uploaded that list prior to creating a campaign. 
I can add a one-off contact. I can also filter for previous calls and texts and run other campaigns and have Callfire cherry pick them out. Or I can copy and paste from a text source. I'll just go ahead and upload a spreadsheet. I like this one over here. I'll select it. Now Callfire will go through the phone number validation process. I'll manually name the columns. Now when you upload a spreadsheet, right now with the way Callfire works, we're only going to send calls to the uh, column of numbers that has the header of home phone. Now even if that number really isn't their home phone number, let's say it's their mobile or their work, that's fine. But if you want them to, be, to receive that phone call, make sure that all those numbers have the header of home phone. I'll press continue. I'll say that uh, I will say as an added comment that our engineers are working on building out logic so that you can put in rules down the road that will say, hey, if someone doesn't pick up their phone uh, about their home phone number, try them at their work. If not, the, if their work number doesn't work or if they're busy there, try their cell. So that logic is coming down the road. Hence the reason we have those other column headers. So Callfire is going through this validation process. Looks like there's some existing contacts. It basically means that those numbers that I'm uploading right now also happen to appear in other campaigns. So I'll just say merge with existing contacts. That's fine. No need to create new contacts altogether. I'll agree to the terms of service, press continue. And we're all set now with this step. So under description where it says three remaining, that means there are three numbers that are eligible to receive phone calls. I'll press next. Last thing we need to do is customize our campaign. So I'll give it a name. I'll call this delinquent reminder calls final notice. Next thing I'll need to configure is my caller ID. Mine's already been verified, but in your all's case, you press a button that says uh, new, and then that would allow you to then have Callfire verify the number you want to use your caller ID. You'll get a phone call from Callfire. You'll type in the security code you hear over the phone. You'll have to do this once. Once your number's verified, you're all set. Local time dialing restrictions, they allow me to set some boundaries as to when it's appropriate for Callfire to send out calls. This will not tell Callfire when to start a campaign. Rather, this tells Callfire, uh, or rather this campaign, when calls should go out and when calls should not go out. So with the way this is configured right now, Callfire will only call folks between 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. local to where they live. So in layman's terms, let's say that I have policyholders who live across the United States. With the way these settings are configured, Callfire won't call folks on the West Coast before 8 a.m. Likewise, it won't call folks on the East Coast, or West Coast for that matter, after 9 p.m. Max simultaneous calls refers to the total number of calls per minute Callfire will attempt to broadcast out. Rest assured, we have thousands upon thousands of channels, so if you need more than that, just give our client success managers a ring, and they'll be happy to arrange that for you. Remember, I only have two folks in my office who can take those incoming calls, so I'll set the max simultaneous calls to something more pedestrian, say 10 calls a minute. With automatic retry logic, Callfire can redial a number depending on the call result. If I check out busy and no answer, and say 60 minutes in one time, what this means in layman's terms is that Callfire will dial all the numbers once, wait an hour, then it will scoop up all the numbers or calls that came back with a status of busy or no answer, and try broadcasting that same message only to those numbers. So very cool tool to make sure that everyone gets the message. I can resume the campaign uh, the next day if it's unfinished. Why would I do that? Because local time dialing restrictions kicked in. If I wanted the campaign to start at a later date and time, I got a schedule to it. I'll just have it start immediately. So I'll press finalize. There are your results. And those calls are going out. So if I go to the call records tab, I can see what's happening in each of my calls. With the visualize tab, I can see a heat map. Show, see where my calls are going. Go to the contacts tab, I can upload more contacts on the fly. Go to the settings tab, I can also change my settings on the fly as well. Anytime you change the settings, always make sure that you press the green apply button to make sure they're preserved. I can also swap out these sound files on the fly too. Again, always making sure I press the green apply button. Let's go back to the call records tab and see if my calls, oh great, they're almost finished. Looks like the status for two of those calls went to answering machine, that's great. We can export all these uh, results out of Callfire as a CSV file or an Excel file. So we're pretty much set. That actually was pretty easy. Now in terms of next steps, should you seek any help or assistance, you can always go to the help section of your account where we have visual tutorials. In other words, written instructions with screenshots that show you more or less how to do everything that I showed you in this video. You can always call us at 877-897-3473, or you can always send us an email at support at callfire.com. We also do have live chat support Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. Eastern to 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that we have lit a path to success for you all, and thanks for watching.